Hi, I'm Russ from 3Grow SharePoint Training and in this short video we're going to have a look at how to filter content within a web part based on the current user's department. First of all, just a, a brief intro uh, to 3Grow if you're not familiar with us. Uh, we um, run public and private SharePoint training throughout Asia Pacific and uh, not just SharePoint but uh, the likes of the Nintex products and live tiles and things like that as well. A bit about me personally, uh, I'm Managing Director of 3Grow, uh, based here in Melbourne. Uh, I've been uh, running training courses for well over 13 years. The last nine of those years have been spent uh, specialising in SharePoint and Nintex and, and so on. So to achieve uh, the outcome here, there's a few things that we need. So first of all, uh, we need a department uh, property within our list or library. Um, the uh, department column in this scenario is going to be a multi-value column so that we can specify more than one department against each item. We must ensure that the choices that we add in the settings of that column match the Active Directory departments, otherwise this filter isn't going to work. We then need a list or library to which we are going to add that column. Within that library, we'll then uh, store a series of documents. Those documents will then have one or more department properties specified against them. What we're then going to do is create, on a new page, we're going to add uh, a web part representing our document library. We're then going to add the current user filter web part. What we're then able to do is specify the property of the current user that we want to use as a filter value. We then use that to filter the document library uh, web part. What we're then going to do is just switch to another browser so we can log in as a different user uh, and just test that that's working. So this is just our standard uh, training publishing site. And the first thing I'll do is just go into the site contents and I've created a library in here very simply storing policy and procedure documents. You'll see that against each of these policies or procedures we have a series of uh, department values. So if we just expand that column a little bit in fact, I'll just uh, hide a couple of these. You can just hide them on the fly in the uh, in the new list and library interface, which is nice. Just allows a bit more space for the other columns. So we'll see that against each of those columns, we have one or more departments. I've also pre-created uh, a, a page within our pages library and it's this page that we're going to be adding the web parts to. So if I just jump into uh, the site contents page again, into the pages library, and here I've created a page simply called My Department Docs. Now of course, as long as the properties exist, it doesn't necessarily need to be the department property, we could use the, uh, the location or something like that as well. But the point of this is to show documents that are most relevant to whoever is looking at that page. The more relevant the information is, the more likely people are to use SharePoint and therefore we should hopefully see an increase in user adoption. So I'm going to just jump into the edit mode of this page and the first thing I'm going to do is then just add a web part for my policies and procedures library. You'll see in this instance I'm using an enterprise wiki page. This could just as easily be a web part page or a publishing page of some sort as well. So I'm simply going to add the policies and procedures web part to the page. What I am going to do 
is just modify the view just so we can actually see the department column. We don't need to be able, uh, we don't need to display that column in order to be able to filter on that value. Uh, it's more just for the for the visualization during the demonstration, just so we can uh, see that it's working. So I'm going to go into the edit mode of the policies and procedures web part and just modify the view that's currently being used. And simply ask it to display the department column. In this instance, I added the column directly to the library because it was uh, relevant, that metadata value is relevant to every document within that library. However, uh, we could have, of course, used content types if a column is only relevant to a subset of documents within that library. Now the department column is showing. I'm also just going to remove the, uh, the toolbar within that web part just to, to tidy that up a little bit as well. So in the edit mode of that web part, again we have the ability to simply remove that toolbar because this page is going to be more for presenting information rather than users uh, using this page to add or upload documents. Okay, so my browser is playing up a little bit uh, rendering this uh, page at the moment because we're in the edit mode. That will certainly be tidied up uh, once we exit the edit mode and view the page uh, as a user. So we now have the policies and procedures uh, web part. What we're also now going to do is insert the current user filter web part, which we'll find in the filters category down the left. Now this web part isn't actually going to take up any space on the page, or, or certainly it's not going to be visible, should I say, uh, when we're not in the edit mode. However, uh, I have added it below the library web part because although we won't see it, it does actually take up space. So it would therefore leave us with a gap at the top if we place this web part above the document library web part. What we then need to do is configure the current user filter web part and specify which property of the current user we want uh, the web part to store. The first thing I'm going to do as well is also just um, specify a name for the filter as well as specifying a name for the web part just so we can see which is which uh, when we go to use that. You'll notice that the default value that the current user filter will store is the username. However, in this instance, we want it to store the department. Interestingly, you will find that there are two department properties available within that dropdown uh, through trial and error. Not many trials, of course, um, and not many errors, but I did determine it is the second one. Not 100% sure as to why. I have done some research, but there's nothing that really tells me. But it is certainly the second department property that we need to uh, select. So all we're essentially doing there is specifying which value, which property of the current user we want that web part to store. OK to confirm that. And that filter web part is now going to store that value. What we then need to do is connect the two web parts together. When we go to the drop down menu of uh, each of those web parts, you'll see there is a connections option. If you don't see the connections option, dependent on the browser, you may need to switch to the edit mode of a web part and then simply go back to the drop down in order to see the connections option. So we can go to policies and procedures web part, go to connections, get filter values from current user web part, that should be current user department. 
Alternatively, we can go to the current user department web part, send filter values to policies and procedures. Either way, that will then open a dialog box where we're then able to specify the provider filter value, which is of course going to be the current user department that's being stored within uh, the current user filter web part. Uh, my browser has opened this up as, uh, as a new tab. Uh, this more often than not will open as um, a small dialog box. When we hit configure, it will then allow us to specify, uh, of course, the, the, the current user department web part only stores, only contains one value. So that, of course, is selected by default. What we then do is specify which column of the policies and procedures library we want to be filtered using that value. Of course, in this instance, it's that multi-value department column. Once we hit finish, it will then apply that filter. You'll notice that we do see the filter icon next to the department column. And what we're now going to do is test that by first of all checking in the page and then publishing that page. and you'll see logged in as myself. You'll see only the documents relating to training because that is my own uh, department. Uh, sorry, sales should I say, is my department. If I were to switch to another browser and if we then open the My Department Documents page as student01, you'll see they only see those three documents. The reason they only see those three documents is because they are from the IT, uh, sorry, HR department. So dependent on who we are signed in as, that will determine which documents we see. So these documents are being dynamically filtered based on the user that is looking at that page at any given moment. As I said, we're using the department property in this scenario. However, we could just as easily uh, use their, their location or uh, the person they report to or something along those lines. Okay, so I hope you found that video useful. Keep an eye on our YouTube channel for more videos. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them below or contact us on learn at threegrow.net.